Okay, we are now recording. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Dame Delia. Diala. Diala. Damn it. I stopped. <laughs> What's the okay. name of all me. the things? Diala. Keep schooling me and I'll learn. I'm a sponge. Okay. okay. Glad to see such a terrific turnout for this class. First time. Um, this is the first time we've had anything like this. Master Chris and I are co teaching this. I'm a former dem thrown weapons he's current thrown them with three for thrown weapons and we've seen and had brought up to us that we do not have enough teaching marshals so that we can get more classes and get more marshals throughout the kingdom thus the creation of this class um at the end of this class those of you who are current marshals if you would contact us and we will make arrangements unless we find out that you really Suck at teaching. No. Uh, we will be able to make you official on the warrant uh, in the warrant database as teaching marshals so that you can teach the 101. Anton and Stacy is uh, Aldous and uh, Olaf. And looking at who else who's, has come in. Yeah. Okay. Basically, most of this is now going to be from my. Where is where's the attendee? Where is there? You go. So let's get me into this. Wait for there we go. Okay, folks, this is the basic outline. It's available under the from the main marshals page under paperwork. It's thrown weapons marshals 101. I've also put a link onto the thrown weapons web page for this. And this is is this new stuff up there now? Yes. And this has all the new stuff that we discussed at an event. All of our current rules are, are in this class now. The outline is divided into two parts. The first page, as you can see, it says teacher prep information is just that. This is what we expect the teacher to be doing beforehand and to be prepared to do within the class. They want to make sure that the new marshals know how to you know, run a safe range, how to apply uh, basics of helping and instructing, and understanding the concepts of, of SCA legal equipment. We would like to see each teacher have available to them to give to the class in some manner, shape, or form. This outline, handouts, preferably if you're doing it in person, a copy for each student, of the society rules, the Atlantean policy. We used to be able to link directly into the thrown weapons section. We can't now. So it's sections 3.1, 3.2, and 3.11. A Marshall's class sign-in sheet, which is standard uh, for the for Atlantia. Um, we now have a how-to for the warrant da database procedures, which we'll see later. Um, a page of useful links. It points to all of the Atlantean pages and to the a few pages outside of Atlantia that people might be interested in. Copy of the etiquette and rules, a sign-in sheet, copy of the royal round rules. If you want to have the quick rules available, that's fine. And you should have multiple copies of the test and at least one answer sheet. The MIT paperwork. Um, which can be, which is under the paperwork section on the Marshall's page. Uh, also, a link to it off of our web page, and equipment to demonstrate with. First thing you're going to do is introduce yourself. Make sure people know who you are. Dame Diala, former Dem TW for Let me Atlantia. Add here. Let me add something here. When you introduce yourself, part of your introduction is giving your name and where you're from. But the other thing you need to do, remember to do, is to give your credentials. What makes you qualified to teach this class? Okay. I have been a marshal for umpteen years. You know, I teach this class under Dame Diala, and, and I'm here to teach you. Yes. The form mentioned for the sign-in sheet, make sure that everyone signs it legibly. Granted, individuals can go and enter the class that they took the class themselves. 
but it also helps for the teacher to be able to go in and say, I taught this class and these were the students who were in the class. And if they don't write legibly, it makes it very difficult to figure out who they are. Then you're gonna pass out the handouts or provide links for all of this information. Then we get into the main teaching outline. As, it's, as stressed at the top, it's not necessary to follow it exactly, but all of the information should be covered. And the full class with the test should take close to the two hours that we usually require for the class. So you're gonna cover you know, safety, the requirements for becoming a marshal. I've got in here the two-year requirement that Gordon is going towards. Um, his latest update, he still hadn't made the 101 two years, though he told me he was going to, and Field Marshal 201 is two years. Um, so we make sure that everybody realizes that it's a two-year and that unevent does qualify. Make sure they understand minimum three MIT sessions covering setup, running the line inspection, and thrower instruction. Say setup takedown, stress the setup. Taking down a range is being very helpful. Setting up is learning how to set up a range, how to space things out, how to put in your safety zones. Um, let's see, where did my little notes go off to the side here? Um, the reason we say minimum of three is that after three, they can submit their part, their paperwork into whoever the DEM is. And based on the comments made by the marshals in charge of the events and possibly contacting their mentor, it'll be determined whether or not they might possibly need a fourth one. The only time I ever asked somebody for a fourth one was when they really needed to work on projection. You couldn't hear them more than two lanes away. All of a sudden they realized, oh, I teach dance. I know how to speak up. Boom, <laughs> they could be heard across the range. The other thing though is the, um, uh, you don't have to stop at three. If you want to do more, you can do more. Until you're comfortable. Until you're comfortable. So okay. we also don't put a time limit on it, um, which is something we may want to think about someday. But right. right now we've got people that have been MITs for three or four years or more. Yes. I mean, the, we're going to have to set a time limit yeah. because the class is going to be <laughs> But it, uh, the, yeah. um, this is what the MIT paperwork looks like. Are you guys seeing them? Is this also sharing properly? Can I get a thumbs up from somebody? Is this sharing properly? Yes, it is. I can see okay. it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've never shared a screen in a Zoom before, so I wanted to make sure that everything was coming through. So they have to put in their information, you know, legal name, SEA, mailing address, email, disciplines, thrown weapons, membership info. They need a mentor, um, legal name and SEA name. Their 201 information, when do they take 101 and from whom? And the previous Earl Marshall tried to make these as standard as across all of the activities. So where it says, uh, you know, some of these things, you know, melee does not, they don't have to check off melee, but inspections don't have to worry about authorizations, but field setup range, encourage new marshals and MITs to get comments. You need lots of comments, good and bad. Um, you know, what do they, I mean, bad being still constructive, what do they need to work on so that when they get to the next one, it can be seen whether they have moved along. This thing has room for, I think, four or five marshalettes or marshal sessions. So they should be able to, and remind them to bring it to every session. Put it in their, yeah. in their SCA gear. Yeah, put, <laughs> put it with their stuff. Um, so as a teacher, make sure that these are the responsibilities that everybody needs to know. Um, 
and then the responsibilities of the MITs, bring your paperwork to all event, <laughs> events. Uh, if you can uh, encourage them to notify the MIC ahead of time so that they know that there's not you know, one marshal and seven MITs, you're not gonna get in enough time helping in a situation like that. And let the MIC know, hey, I've done range setup. I've done a lot of inspections. I really need some time running the line. So you wanna make sure that they know the different options and that they can talk to the uh, MIC about that. Make sure they understand how to do reports. I don't, I think reporting has been a topic on at Unevent for at least the past six, seven years. Um, <laughs> making sure that all the proper information gets into the uh, report. The event gives you the basic outline, though I will show later, I've got a how-to on this, uh, but it requires a number for the number of authorizations. It's zero. Marshall should be you, not the event, Mick. It should be the name of the activity, Mick. And MOL requires something, so not applicable. We don't have the MOLs active. Then you get into all of the descriptions, names of all of the marshals and MITs who assisted. That's why you have a sign-in sheet for all participants and have a uh, column there for who is in a marshal and who's an MIT, because you need to, you're going to need that information for the report. You can also use minors too. Yes. Yeah. Um, description of the activities. Don't just say, uh, you know, we held a tournament. And I don't need to read all of this. You'll be able to see all of it. Um, I've gone through it too many times, <laughs> but go, go over the stuff about the reporting and about the quarterly reports. Everybody's required to submit quarterly reports. Required is a little strict. We've never taken anybody's marshal it away for not report, reporting, but it really helps us know that you're still out there and that you haven't just gone inactive. So you wanna stress that they need to get in their quarterly reports. Then there's reporting injuries and all that kind of fun that you should already know as marshals. Um, then you're going to need to cover the range safety. The range setup must be clearly marked. We've changed a lot of the distances, so make sure that you're familiar with all of the new distances when you go to teach new people. Yeah. Chris, you have something? Yeah, you have to have a physical boundary. You cannot just have an open range where people could walk in over a line. Okay, I mean, you can't you can't just mark a line on the ground with a rope or paint and say this is this is my boundary. You have to have something that will stop people from walking across your field. I had a very heated discussion with a marshal who believed in open fields, and in the middle of our discussion, he's saying, "No, I don't need a boundary." We had a family walk onto the field. <laughs> so yeah, so you you want to emphasize the physical boundaries. Um, let's see what we got here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The equipment safety is gets to be the toughest part of when you're teaching because that's where you're going to need to have. Th this is why we're not going virtual yet with the 101 class. We really want you, to, as a teacher, to have a collection of good and bad weaponry. Save all of your broken stuff, save your cracked stuff want you to be able to pass them around the classroom and then let people determine, is this good, is this bad? Good or bad is a judgment of the marshal doing the inspection. If you are not comfortable with that weapon, make sure that they realize that they can say, no, I do not want this on my range. Um, and make sure that you explain to them to put the emphasis on themselves. I am not comfortable with this weapon, not you can't use it. Um, if it's 
one of the MITs who's who's doing the inspections or an assisting marshal, the thrower can uh, appeal to the marshal in charge who can override them. But make sure that you realize all of the marshals, if they have a good reason for doing something, the people above them will support them. If they're just unsure and they want the person above them to check it out, great. MITs should always have a full marshal with them when doing the inspections. They should not be doing it unsupervised. Yeah, but we both know what happens at events. Everybody yes. gets busy. So you should at least should be within earshot of your MIT. So got have the descriptions of all of the things that they're supposed to do during the inspections. All of you as teacher, all of you as marshals should already know all of this. So we don't need to cover how to do an inspection. But make sure that they're aware that we have five types of weapons official at this time. Axe, knife, spear, plumbata, and sling are all legal within this kingdom at this time. Um, as, as of now, it has been put into the rules that will be coming out later this year. Gordon has approved the sling. That's why we have them officially in the class now. Anything other than those five types, make sure that they're aware that they can turn those down for almost any reason they want. If they don't want a chakram on their range, they doesn't matter what condition that chakram is in, they can say no. Um, if it's not one of the, it's not identifiable as one of the five basics, you can just say no, not on my range. Um, make sure they understand how to deal with tape on a handle. Is it decorative or is it structural? Are there any questions at this point from anybody going through the uh, outline? I've been going through it kind of fast. Do we have anybody with any questions? Paganis has a question. If, if a weapon is technically legal, but you don't feel comfortable with it, um, is that okay on your range? Yes, uh, I mean, you, you can you can turn it down if if it's a if it's an axe, but it's an oversized axe and it mm -hmm. might destroy your target. You can say no. If it's doesn't fit with this style of throw that you're doing, you don't want something with multiple points on it. Can you are you? thinking of some other type of situation. I, I, I was thinking more of somebody that wants to chuck little knives as hard as they can against a hard target. Oh. In that case, eyes, things okay. like that. At that point, what you would want to do is something along the lines of, you know, it's perfectly legal. It's a legal weapon. You are not using it in a safe way. I will, I do mm -hmm. not feel comfortable with it on the range. Okay. Yeah, little knives are a pain. Yeah, they are. But I want to let you, all of you know, you know, and, and you can tell this to the marshals that you teach that I will back them up, okay? Things that I will accept on the range that they won't, I'm not going to force them to accept, okay? You know, every marshal has to be comfortable within themselves for the safety of their range. I have a few axes that I love giving to the MITs that I feel comfortable throwing, but if they don't like them or any other marshal doesn't like them, I will put them back in my bag. And it's a perfectly good ax, a little bit chipped away in the handle. But so yes, if it is a legal weapon, but you are uncomfortable with it, you can say no. Yeah, make sure all of your students are comfortable saying no. Yeah. Anybody, any other questions other than Ghanis? Okay, make sure they understand all of the information about target materials. We have hard targets, we have soft targets. With slings, we're going to be coming up with a whole bunch of other types, you know, baskets or hoops and things like that. Plumbatas can be vertical, horizontal, um, you know, on the ground, against the ground, foam, you know, hard, soft. As long as the weapons that you're going to be using against the target will not destroy the target, unless it's meant to be destroyed, uh, like we've had melons and things like that, or balloons. 
get creative. But you do want something that will hold up to whatever you plan on people throwing against it. And, stre and stress that they should make sure that that's what they have when they set up their range. The other things are, you know, every marshal should have some sort of a kit. We have, I've got a list here in the outline, and there's also one in the off of the web page under the handouts. The typical mar marshals. <laughs> um, you know, every marshal should have a copy of the Atlantean rules and the society rules or a device that will allow them to get to them electronically and make sure that they have connectivity. Um, what's real nice is to have something that indicates whether the range is open or closed, because every, every marshal sometimes needs to take a break and they may not have assisting marshals. So they should be able to mark the range as closed while they go to the bathroom, go take lunch, whatever. Uh, and your target materials, what do you need for your games or whatever you're going to be playing? Tape, staplers, uh, staples, those are always really good things to have in a standard bag that you carry with you at all times. Uh, like I said, Marshall, make sure that they understand. This is coming from two former chirurgeons. Marshals <laughs> should practice self-care. Hydration and breaks are encouraged. Chairs and or shaded areas on the range are acceptable. Make sure everybody understands that. They don't have to stand out in the sun all day long. Um, make sure that your prospective marshals know that they are expected to teach. They have to be able to show the basics of how to throw at least an ax or a knife to get people started. We understand that heavy marshals aren't expected to be able to throw, tell anybody how to throw a flat snap. Rapier marshals aren't expected to teach somebody how to do anything in particular. Archery and thrown weapons tend to expect their marshals to be able to give the basics. Make sure you stress that they do have to be comfortable with that and should make sure that they get a chance to do it supervised as an MIT. Range commands, make sure they understand the wording here is not exact. You need something along the lines of clear down range, clear behind, clear to throw, weapons expended, you may retrieve. Um, yes, people do get lazy when that uh, when you get with a comfortable group, and that's fine as long as the basics are covered. Make sure that so to make sure that your Marshals understand, as long as this information is covered, if you're dealing with new throwers, it should be close to exact. You should be consistent with your new throwers. Don't change it from one line of throwers to the next line of throwers. It doesn't have to be this exact, but it should be consistent. Um, we're trying to encourage some sign language and gestures. That will be forthcoming as we get, we've gotten them. We have some basics that oh, Chris has oh, used. Clear, no, the range is clear. Oh. You can all, you don't have to use official, like you could just say, you know, the range is clear, make gestures. But this is so people get used to doing it so that once you have somebody that might be hard of hearing on your range, that they will have gestures to use for signals. Um, uh, so we have, the range is clear. We have, you may throw, you know, you can pantomime throwing something. And then you can retrieve, you know, they can come back and get, you know, get whatever it is they're getting. So use sign language, use gestures of some kind. They don't have to be official sign language, but that will help people that have hard of hearing things or if your voice is soft or something else that it will help people uh, in all ways. Okay. Um, two of the more, I don't want to say obscure, but lesser used things uh, on our ranges are changing people's distances and thrower rotations. Make sure when you teach that you explain 
it doesn't have to be start at the farther distance and move forward or start at the forward distance and move back, but make sure they understand that everybody has to be at one distance and move with the whole group to the other distance, whichever it may be. Um, for the thrower, for the thrower rotation, that's when you have a waiting line. Depending on how long your line is, how many targets you have, make sure they understand and get a chance to hopefully in their MIT experiences, rotate people through the targets, bringing in new people, sending people off. If you have a spear target and nobody wants to rotate into spear, that person can stay while the rest rotates. Make sure they understand all of that. Coming late in the class, but definitely not a low level thing, is making sure that the marshals understand the hold, the marshals understand how to explain the hold to the throwers. Um, the, in the handouts and stuff are copies of the range etiquette and the line rules. You don't need to go through those, but they should be posted or on your table somewhere where people can see them. Goes over that basically here. Youth throwers. You can see still being worked on to be totally official. But what we've been doing is what's been used at Penzik to much success is if the thrower is between inclusive five to through eleven, the parent or guardian must remain at the range. Not they don't have to be on the range with them, but they have to be at the range while the youth is active. Twelve through seventeen, the parent or guardian still needs to sign them in. And um and, and be made aware that we are using real weapons. Um, any questions about that at this point or anything else up to now? Yes, yeah, so uh, I, when it comes to, sorry, when it comes to youth, I thought a parent or guardian or the person that brought them and signed the waiver for them had to stay not on the range, but had to stay closer. But you're stating it's five to 11 they need to stay. And then if they're older, they can be what, within shouting distance? Yeah. Or, or, or they the, can just be on site. The way it's listed in the youth stuff and the seneschalate and all of its sub things, some of them say it, it comes down to a lot of interpretation. And I know that at one point, archery interpreted it very differently than. Yeah. Uh, than thrown weapons. The basics are the wordage of activity versus event. The parent or guardian has to be at the event and has to be available to the activity, but does not have to stay at the activity. There's no reason for a 17 year old to have to have their parent at the range the whole time. Like I said, we made the cutoffs of 11, 12, based on experiences from you know, over 20 years at Penzik, and it has worked well. There are 12 year olds who can, or there are 10 year olds who can handle themselves just fine. And there are 14 year olds that I really am not comfortable with, but basically- Is it waiver and, and what, like? I mean, I mean, the waivers and membership stuff is, was done at Troll. Yeah, we, we don't have any waivers at the range itself. What about? Okay, that's never mind. Sorry. Uh, no, if, if, I, <clears throat> if I could verify something real quick, okay, as the marshal for the throne event that includes the younglings, um, you said that the the guidelines state that from you know five to eleven, is, the parents have to be there. And from, I guess, 11 to 17, the parents have to be on site. As the marshal, can I stipulate my range? I don't want any kids under 16 years old without their parents right there? Yes. Okay. Since, since this is just guidelines, you can always be stricter than our rulings. You can never be looser. 
Um, yeah. yeah. If you're not comfortable with 15 year olds on your range unaccompanied. And remember that if you are running a range and you are running a youth specific activity, then you have to make sure that you cover the the two unrelated people and somebody has a background in inspect uh, uh yeah, background <laughs> investigation all on file. But if you have it as an open throw that is available to anybody from five through ninety-nine. You don't have to worry about making sure of those concerns. Ivy, you had another question? I had, had an issue with, um, it, and I do archery, not thrown, which is yeah. the difference, but I wanted to, we're, we're starting to do thrown at um, our practice as well. I wanted to make sure, um, I, I've had an issue with parents leaving children from six to whatever, with me and walking off at the practice. Now, do I need to have a waiver? Can I have a waiver that states that, sorry, Charlie, you need to be here um, with you your can. baby? You, you can, we don't have specific waivers for those um, within Kingdom. I don't wanna get in trouble and I don't wanna get my group in trouble for if something You're not happens. A babysitter. You're not a babysitter. Thank you. <laughs> you are not a babysitter. So can I say something? Yes. Hello. So following up on the same subject matter, the umbrella of it's my range and I am not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Can it just all fall under that? Yes, exactly. Everything, everything I've heard has happened mm -hmm. to me too and some more stuff. And the uh, one teenager who just was having a wonderful time with the parent and the parent was fixing to walk away and you just saw the sadness in the kid's face he really wanted to share a few more minutes with his parent and I sided with the kid and said you have to stay <laughs> yep. and he, he was so happy for the next 15 minutes yeah okay. Paganis you had a question uh, yes please so in, in that world of being that more restrictive as far as the, the parent being there so that's kind of being one category. Um, but as far as that that comfort level with the minimum age being five, is that something that we have the ability to uh, be more strict ourselves as well? Because I'm just yes. thinking about for myself personally, if I'm looking at the range, if I a five-year-old comes up, I don't care if you tell me that they're the most responsible five-year-old in the world, that five-year-old picking up a knife the first time they throw it, even before I've seen how well they throw it, I know I'm really, really nervous about that. That's good. Yes, you can. What uh, we do recommend is anytime you're going to make anything stricter than the standards, yeah, announce it as much ahead of time as possible. I mean, we are the gateway. We in archery are the gateways into the SCA in many cases because we don't have authorizations. We do allow youth without anything fancy. If you're going to make anything stricter, Make sure you announce it ahead of time. Does that answer your question, Paganis? Robert, you have your hand up. I just wanted to say, we're talking about the children. You know, I've had the situation before. Duke Dietrich, you know, at the time he was the king, and his son was really into throwing weapons. Well, the king's not going to be coming down to the range to stay with his son to throw because the king's got his own things he's doing. But they did have someone that was basically appointed as the the event guardian for Dietrich's son, and they stayed at the range with him, just as if they were his parents, just to stand in. If they, especially when it comes to the royalty and they can't stay there and they do have a younger child, if they have what they consider a legal guardian stand in for them, that would be allowed. Okay, now back to actually the teaching of the class rather than questions about marshalling in general. First of all, yes, I want to check to see. This says this is your screen. I'm on the Zoom meeting. Because what screen is, what, what page is everybody seeing right now? We're seeing the event marshalling assistance. It hasn't moved the entire time. Oh, see, that's... I, I got rid of that. Okay. Yeah, I just, I'm glad I joined. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
my screen sharing. Oh, somehow my screen sharing paused. Okay. Starting. Uh, new share. No, oh, Adolf, never be alone with kids without another unrelated adult with you. Okay. Not, now, are, now are you seeing it? There we go. Okay. There we go. Sorry, folks. So I've been highlighting things on on here that you guys wouldn't see me highlight because I did that. Um, but you'll be able to look through. All good. The... Uh, 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 just real quick, uh, if, if what I'm seeing is correct, all of this information is on the Marshall website. Yes. Yes. So we okay. So we can go back and look at it. Yes. yes the the outline is. From the main marshals page, you go under paperwork and it's down there. It's also linked from our thrown weapons webpage also. And we're hopefully gonna have this recording for the yes. future. <laughs> yes. If if the recording turns out to be decent. decent. Of it. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Um so yeah, now we're done with all the fun with the youths. Um make sure that they that the Prospective marshals are aware of all of the communication styles that we have. There, we have the e-list and Facebook page. Um, there's also the Atlantean marshals page and Facebook. Um, remind them that all marshals should be able to provide the basic instructions, information about using loaner weapons. Remind them something that it took me a long time to learn. Never turn down assistance requests unless you unless it's somebody you really can't work with. Um, it always helps to have at least one other person doing the inspections while you're running the line, taking over the line while you grab a bite to eat. Don't turn down assistance. Make sure that your prospective students realize don't turn down assistance. <laughs> Um, if depending on how fast you teach and how many students you have and the number of questions, want to do some basic coverage of some of the special competitions that are available. Our Royal Rounds are up and active these days, and Plumbatas have been officially added to them as of just a couple of weeks ago. And it's out on the scores page, and it's out on our web page. So we've got our Royal Rounds and the Throne Weapons. Uh, and the TWIC, we have links to both of those on our web page. Let them know to keep an eye out for whether it's Atlantean University, at any Atlantean event, at Penzik, at Gulf Wars, at any event they go to. Watch for people who are teaching other types of classes. We have, we're hoping to start creating some videos. You have people record how to teach throwers the throwing for the physically impaired, the target making, running competitions, and care and maintenance. Um, the more we can get out there for people to find and look at as, it, as it's done within the SCA, the better it is for the marshals to learn things that they might not be able to find in just their local area. Jeanette, Jeanette you had a question? Yes. Um, so is as far as like um contests and you just froze uh like the ica cat uh the inner kingdom I'm sorry? no you you froze temporarily so if you um, please... is there a contest for specifically thrown weapons uh for the, the... uh inner kingdom yes that's what the the twick is the thrown oh, okay. weapons inter kingdom competition Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just like the ICAC and the ICACAC and the <laughs> others. Thank you. Remind them that there is no alcohol on the range. No unlike, one un unlike bars. <laughs> yeah, like 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 the axe bars. No, this is not the same as an axe bar. No alcohol on the range or under the influence of drugs or alcohol that is affecting them. We know people have to take certain medications. If it's affecting their mobility, their Thinking they should not be on the range. Um, and the test 
that we ask everybody to take is more of a class review. It's not really a pass fail. It's a, okay, you missed these questions. What were you thinking? Why did you choose what you chose? And go through that with them afterwards. I mean, if they miss 20 out of 25, obviously they weren't listening in class and should not be continuing. But for the most part, I think the most I've ever had anybody miss was five out of 25. That's all I can remember. Yeah. yeah. And when you go over it, there are at least one or two that are a little questionable and may need to be rewritten um, so that there could be multiple answers for it. So yeah, there may be a chance that they'll interpret it differently. Other times they forget to see the not or something like that and they understand. It's not a, you will, you, you miss three questions, you can't be a marshal. Um, and I, I, I understand that that puts a lot of responsibility on you guys for decisions and, and on the marshals that you teach. But I think that is a better individual approach than say, uh, then say, you know, you miss you miss six questions and you fail. Um, if they have a complete understanding of the class, you know, but they can't take tests, that might be what is actually reflected. Yeah. Sorry, got a crisis. Yes. <laughs> Don't have a mess. Okay. Before we go into some of the handouts, does anybody have any additional questions? Not, not seeing anything? Good. One thing in the chat, don't miss that. Um, I have one question. Yes. When you get done to the end and you have all the tests and everything, are we then responsible to like give you the test uh, answers? I mean, I'm, do we, does this get back to you somehow? No. Or, no. Nope. Okay. Nope. It's a tool for you. Yes. I, I okay. keep all the ones that I've ever given, when, mm -hmm. even from before I was a, the dem um you know if i have a question when the person comes back and they start marshalling and i can see okay you misunderstood this here and you misunderstood it again i can go over it with them but otherwise no you do not have to get it back to the to the dem so basically so, we are we are the teacher this is our classroom make sure you cover all the points and then it's up to you to, if you're going to hold on to things, what you're, you know, keep and, and yes. decide who moves. Well, if they go through the class and they can answer everything and they understand, then they move on and do their Practical more training experience. physically. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys now seeing a new page with a bunch of uh, yes. air, air quality? Yes. Objects? Okay. So I put together a couple of, uh, little pages that help people who are trying to find where are these forms how do i find them how do i fill them in what's wanted so for the new mit got you know requesting a new or completed warrant when they complete their warrant they can go in and do use the same form from marshallatlantia.sea.org go down to select request a warrant up in the uh, upper right hand corner that brings them to a page where you can pull, have a pull down and select that you're requesting a new warrant. From there, you choose the type, which would be thrown weapons, put in who taught it and the date and um, Sorry, this one, this doesn't have a who taught it. That's for when you take the class. Um, you know, the type that you want, whether you're asking for a new warrant for the brand new MIT, or I've completed everything and I want word to get back to Master Chris to give the final sign off. So it can be used by either one. Um, so there's, yeah. yeah, I'm working on the training requests or I've completed the training requests. They can choose whichever one is appropriate. And whoops. And then select done and you're done. This was always a hard one to find and a hard one to remember to tell people about. I'm hoping that by having this out there, it will help 
the teachers and the students. Um, then we have, oops. Yeah. Yes. Why not take a, put this link right on the training forms so on the very bottom? Because we don't have control of the training forms. I can ask, I, I, um, I can ask Brian if he can put it on there and if Gordon wants it on there, um, probably would be a good thing to have to put at the end of all of your MIT sessions. That's a great suggestion. I will put it forth to the powers that be who control it. Um, also have one for the event reporting, creating an event, putting in an event. Um, what I haven't put in here yet, since I'm still playing with it, this is if you're doing a regular event. I don't have the pull down for if you're going to do it as a quarterly under event, you choose other. And then it gives you another pop up where you can describe what the actual event or actual thing is you're reporting. Everything that's in here was basically in the outline with descriptions of what else is wanted in there. Excuse me. And then you hit submit. So what did I, ah, it's requesting the warrant. We did, how did they, how did I lose one? Warrant, warrant, oh, class reporting, there. Okay, so, after the MIT has taken the class and after you have taught the class, you go in and select request a warrant under the class, under classes, select record that you took a class or that you taught a class. You're gonna choose the type, the class date, the trainer. Hopefully we'll be adding some of you to that trainer list that will be pulled down. And then, oops, yeah, once you fill that all, then just hit request. And in any case, it will come to Master Chris saying that this person has requested it or this person has taught it, and it goes out into the database. Um, if you are the teacher doing this and putting in all of your students who took the class, if the student has never had any sort of other warrant, their name will not appear in the pull down. You have to wait until they go out and request a warrant. Then they'll put it in or they can put it in themselves that they've done it. Um, so sometimes it may be right after the class, you go in and you put in all your students, except for one, you have to remember to go back in and put the one once they're in the database or they have to put it in for themselves. Any questions at that point? If I'm pretty kitty. <laughs> Roxy. Um cat. <laughs> Oops. Where yet over there. So this is not available on the uh I can't read uh, uh, I can't read you. Yeah. Uh, I have to do this. This is just a, a quick copy of the test. We are actually running low on time. I was hoping that we could run through it if we had time so that people could see the types of questions being asked. Because some of you who got, who, who never had to take the test because, well, you were Marshall in another kingdom and we gave you blessings after giving you something <laughs> else. We've not seen some of the fun questions we've got on the test. But as soon as uh, Master Chris approves you to become a teaching marshal, you will get a copy of the test that you can bring to your classes and read through and say, hey, this is a really stupid question. Why is it on there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, any questions at this point before we finish everything up. Did we have anybody, any, any no-shows? Um, 
from people who Brocken. Oh, Brocken. I'm understand. Oh, he did. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. And a few people who signed up for the class who never showed up. Yeah. And don't I, you want I don't to have any? Them. There's no questions in the chat either. Everyone's been uh, asking their questions. Yeah. Yeah. Anton and Stacy. Yeah. That's Elderson. Oh, okay. That's Elderson. Uh, Elderson. Uh, Elderson. Uh, Elderson. Uh, ah, okay. Um. Yeah. So only one of the no-shows is currently a marshal. So. I've, find out from her why she, you know, what her holdup was and maybe give her a special training on this. Yeah. Did it, you guys feel that this was useful? Yes. I've seen a lot of thumbs up, a lot of good things, yes. okay. Um, I'm curious. But yeah, for a non-thrown weapons marshal, I mean, I found it very informative because there's a lot of stuff that I can apply as a target archery marshal in just the, 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 the methods and how to go about it. So I thought it was very helpful as a teaching marshal. Okay. Most of the stuff I already knew, but I just needed to see the correct form forms. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Quick okay. question. Now yeah. if if five people out of my barony all of a sudden decide they want to be throwing weapons marshals, I could just host one. Yeah. It doesn't have to be university or anything. Oh, no, anything. it can be two. It can be one. It can be one person, one-on-one okay. -on -one in your backyard. Okay. Okay. Bring bring in new marshals one at a time or 15 <laughs> at a time. I don't care. <laughs> 15 is a, is a large class to work with. But, uh, True. I, I mean, I, I used to have youth that were, you know, 33 at a time. So, you know, 15 adults should be good, right? Yep. Doesn't it have to be like an official like event or an official practice? No, to... not for the class. Not for this class. No, it does not. Okay. For the things like the Royal Rounds, they have to be an official event or practice. But the class can be taught anywhere. And if you feel comfortable with it, and if Master Chris approves it, for the people who need their two-year yeah. renewal, um, right now we're allowing, the, the two of us are doing those over the phone or just you know little one on ones that without the full class um, i'm finding that it takes about 45 minutes to bring somebody up to date who's out of who's out of date yeah. you know they know the information they just need to refresh and and hit the new points sorry to be the bear of bad news but we're about yep. ready to run out of time and i yep. don't know if this room is going to be uh, used for another class yep that thanks i was just doing the final so close up thank class. you Thank you all. We Thank love you all. you all. If you've got any <laughs> comments about the class, you know, get a hold of us afterwards and we will see what changes we have to make, but oh. at least make this available initially. Well, I'll get a hold of you. Oh, we know you will. <laughs> all right. So does everybody here comfortable with becoming a teaching marshal? I'm assuming right. that's a yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Those yes. Of you who are currently marshals. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. So you can start teaching this afternoon. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you might okay. want to make sure which ones you know, they, yeah. they are. Well, <laughs> the ones that are yeah. marshals now. Yeah, we can stop the recording.